Good afternoon, guys. Today we're talking about engines, and this is a really important thing. If you've got a 606, you've probably heard of this particular issue. I know I have. So you might have a 606 engine, and you might be struggling to get this thing to stay on, the harmonic balancer. You might be finding that the bolt that holds this to the crankshaft is coming loose, and you might also be finding that it's snapping off the keyway. Now, I've decided to have a deeper look into this particular issue with a few solutions um, to prevent this happening to somebody like yourselves and who this issue is likely to happen to also, because that's a very interesting po point to make. So, right, we've taken apart maybe, say, three engines that have all had this particular issue where the keyway on the front of the crankshaft has sheared and it is no longer possible to keep the front pulley tight and no matter how much you tighten this and what type of bolt you put in a loctite or anything it is impossible to get that to stay on now interestingly every one of those engines that was throwing the front pulley and making that bolt come slack had bent con rods yes the actual con rods in the engine were bent the engines all ran perfectly well they made no real uh, obvious signs of bent rods, no smoking, no obvious lack of compression, uh, not really feeling particularly unbalanced or anything like that. But every single one of them had bent rods. Now this one is one that I, I just took apart, the last of them that I took apart this morning. So what you do is if you take your rod, make sure your cap's properly bolted on, lay it on a nice flat surface, and you'll find that you can slide a piece of paper under it that way. You're holding down tight on this big end. Can't get any paper under it that way. But this way, easy peasy. So if I push on the big end here, you can see there's a gap under the, under the bottom of the big end. You know what I mean? You can see there's a gap towards the front of that. You can see that, right? But there's no gap under the little end. Now if I flip that over, push, push down hard on the big end, look how I've now got a big gap on the little end. And you can see this paper will go underneath. And every one bar one of these connecting rods have this issue. Every single one of them is bent. So the first fix for that issue is an upgraded H-beam connecting rod. Um, these rods that I sell not particularly expensive, nothing particularly flashy, but stronger than the original. They're a forged rod, they're a H-beam, they take the power, um, and we're not having the same bending issues with these. They come with some ARP fixings that obviously are a little bit larger than the originals. They are marginally, marginally heavier than the originals. I should be able to put a weight comparison up on the video if I've, I'll have that somewhere from if you look at our website advert, you'll see the weight difference between these and the originals. Anyway, nice, easy fit. All you need to do is make sure that you get that bearing sized correctly to your piston pin, and then you can fit them in the engine. And they are available in standard length, which is what the majority of people buy, and they're also available in a slightly shorter length to allow you to fit the crankshaft out of the 320 CDI. But we're not gonna complicate matters about that today. So that's one fix that's gonna stop that crank balancer coming loose because you're not gonna have bent rods unbalancing your engine. Now, the next thing is, if you still have concerns about the balancer and keeping that balancer fixed, or you are absolutely confident you don't have bent rods and you want to somehow resecure that front crankshaft pulley, we've designed a tool um, which basically is a hardened steel, or should I say a hard steel, uh, insert that you screw into the crankshaft you wind that all the way in and that imagine the pulleys would be would be on at this point you wind that right in and it comes with a hard drill bit and it allows you to use one of these three holes you only use one and the reason we put three holes in is so that you can avoid where the original keyway is once that's tight in and you can drill straight through and it drills half of the crank and it drills half of the pulley 
and it allows you to install a supplied 6mm pin and that allows you to re-secure this and it's a bit more heavy duty than the original keyway. So obviously, first of all, I'd recommend making sure the rods obviously aren't bent and if they are, you need to replace them anyway, but that's easy. And then if you want to be double secure with that, then we do a kit to actually pin that crank nice and easy. It comes with that, that, the drill bit, uh, and that makes life easy. Now, if you want to see what the keyway looks like, it's a really odd thing. Um, it looks like this. This is what the original Mercedes keyway actually looks like. It's just a flat piece of bar, totally flat, uh, with, with, well, with two bent ends, but it's not cast or doesn't appear to be shaped like a, like a traditional keyway in any way. And it sits between these two keys, that one, uh, keyway slot, sorry, that one and that one. And it actually locates the, uh, the original uh, timing chain gear that also drives your oil pump and that stops that from from obviously turning and keeps everything in time now if you go to Mercedes and you want to replace this uh, they actually will the part number has been superseded well the part number has been carried over but the part I believe has been superseded and this is what you receive you receive just the regular half moon style keyway you know like you would in a normal conventional vehicle however the bottom is chamfered which is really odd um, and I believe that they are the replacement for these. Generally, you catch it before that and you can use this and you can use one of these pins and that's going to be more than adequate. But if not, I think that is Mercedes' fix, two of those in place of one of those. Something also worth mentioning about this whole scenario of the crank balancer coming loose and how to build your engine strong. Um, it's worth noting that the vehicles that were actually doing this, the vehicles that have seemingly bent their rods and sent the crankshaft pulley flying, all appear to be manual transmission and generally 350 wheel horsepower or more. Um, they tended to be like the S200s, the really snappy ones that I enjoy, the ones that really feel feisty with a manual transmission. Pump size doesn't seem to matter. I mean, the small, the, the, none of them had the small elements. The earlier ones obviously had the diesel Mekin 7.5s and then some of the later ones with the issue of had my um, 7.7s perhaps, but uh, generally the big horsepower engines that haven't been suffering this have been on auto boxes anyway, but yeah. So that's something really worth mentioning that the engines that have had this issue have been manual transmission 350 wheel horsepower or more. So 350 wheel horsepower can be 450 toward 500 at the crank if you're you know, on one of these S200 helps. So that's worth noting. So if you are planning on building a, you know, a, a, a 350 wheel horsepower or more build on a manual transmission, I think it's gonna be a really good idea to put in a set of rods and do this pin mod. Um, save yourself the hassle of that thing coming loose uh, and, and you never know, uh, you know, if you build, build it for someone else and that thing comes loose, they might make a hate website all about you. And then a hate Facebook page, um, probably a hate calendar. They'll even get a load of haters in a group. There's going to be a lot of hate, basically, if that pulley comes loose because you tried to build someone a nice 400 horsepower car. Uh, anyway, <laughs> back to business. So, yeah. Um, and a little bit of something else interesting that I'm going to show you while you're on, because obviously we've covered this crankshaft balancer thing coming loose. We do have a harmonic balancer coming up for sale very shortly, a more durable one, something that will get rid of a bit of harmonics a little bit better. We're not going to show you that just yet. Um, and we also would like to show you Mercedes way of uh, repairing a damaged bore. So, down there we've got an engine block this is the one that the damaged crankshaft came out of and it was sat outside for a, quite a long time and obviously the balls are really quite badly pitted so if you wanted to you know refurbish this generally what you would do is you would machine that and put a larger piston in now Mercedes they don't condone a larger piston they don't 
offer that. They don't think that that is the right way of doing things. And I am a bit of a, um, well, I'm a big Mercedes fan. I think the way they do their engineering is incredible. So I'm going to say that what they say goes. So they say, don't put a larger piston in. They say, install a liner into the cylinder. And you can buy these from Mercedes. So if you wanted to purchase a new piston from Mercedes, a genuine piston from Mercedes, that would cost you over £400 for one piston. That's Mercedes price, not mine. Um, there are other companies that make pistons, yes, but we know that these are awesome and they don't break, so they're obviously made well. 400 quid. Obviously you can't get an oversized, but that block gonna need boring. So Mercedes sell this. And these are quite inexpensive. I think they're about 40, 50 pounds, something like that. And it is an actual press-in liner that is designed to, designed to simply replace uh, the original cylinder bore. So you would bore the cylinder out you leave a lip, like a top hat, just like this. This liner gets pressed in, and then once that's pressed in, that is the new cylinder. And then this would usually then be, um, you know, board sized perfectly to, to match your piston, because these will be undersized. Um, and you don't have to take very much material out to do so. And obviously the good news is the 606 does have very, very thick cylinder walls anyway. I think that on the block that we cut in half, we measured six, seven mil. So it is quite an incredible piece, but these are very inexpensive and genuine from Mercedes, and this is what they recommend. And this is actually what's going in that engine. It's, it only needs three, but we're putting six in, just keep it consistent. So there you go, uh, a, a fix for the problem. Rods and a crankshaft keyway kit. Yes, we're gonna have a new version of that soon, but that's perfectly good at this point. Um, and yeah, check your rods. Because if you've got that problem, there's a good chance they're all going to be bent, sadly. So there you go. Little engine tip from Diesel Pump UK. Enjoy. Have a nice life. Goodbye.